In this video, we'll discuss drawing dormers manually. We'll draw two different types of dormers, a shed dormer and a gable dormer, and then we'll discuss dormer walls and attic walls and some settings to adjust them. I'm going to start in this plan. The roof is complete except for the dormers. I've also already created a second floor so that we have living space in our attic. We have a video on creating one and a half story roofs if you need to review the steps up to this point. You can see in my floor plan that I have a number of walls on this floor. Most of these walls are attic walls, and we'll talk more about these towards the end of today's video. This is the space we're going to focus on today. I would like to draw dormers in the front and back of this house. We aren't able to use the automatic dormer tools for this dormer at the front of this house because this dormer will need to extend across two roof planes. The automatic dormer tools require the dormer to be contained within a single roof plane. Here's a picture of the first dormer we're going to be drawing today. Dormers are comprised of three elements, exterior walls, a hole in the existing roof planes, and a roof plane, or multiple planes, over the top of the dormer. I'll begin by drawing the walls of the dormer. For this particular dormer, the front wall of this room is going to be the front wall of the shed dormer. So I'm just going to draw the two side walls of the dormer. Then I'm going to use my temporary dimensions to establish how far inside the main walls the dormer will sit. Next I need to create the hole for the dormer because as you can see in my 3D view, those walls that I just drew are not extending through the roof. I'll begin with this front roof plane. If I use this edit handle to pull the back of this roof plane forward, now I don't have a roof plane extending on either side of this dormer. So instead, I'm going to use my break line tool to break the back line of this roof plane on either side of the dormer walls. Then I can pull just this part of the roof plane forward, leaving a space for the dormer. Then I'll do the same thing with this roof plane in back, creating a break on either side of the dormer so I can cut a hole around it. Finally, I need to draw the roof plane that will sit over top of this dormer. So I'll select my roof plane tool and draw the roof plane. I'm going to do a shed roof in front so it only requires a single roof plane. I'll click and drag to draw the baseline, then pull my mouse in towards the house and left-click to place it. When drawing new roof planes that are on top of existing roof planes, Chief Architect asks us if we want to draw this new roof plane up with the existing one so that they can connect and form a ridge, or if I want it to sit on top of the wall like it would typically happen. Since it needs to go above the dormer, we want this one to go over the wall top. Then I'm going to open this roof plane, lock the baseline so that I don't wind up moving this roof plane off the top of my wall that it's currently bearing on, and then change the pitch to 3 and 12. Then I'll connect this new roof plane to the existing one by selecting the top edge. I can tell that I have the top edge selected because its edit handle is larger and red. Selecting Join Roof Planes in my Edit Toolbar, and then selecting the roof plane I want to join it to. Finally, I'll need to extend the sides of the dormer roof over top of the dormer's sidewalls. Note that when I do, an attic wall builds between the top of the wall and the roof plane. We'll discuss why in a moment. And that completes our first dormer. You can now add windows in front just like you would on any other wall. Now let's build another dormer. Technically, we could use the automatic dormer tools in this area, but I'm going to show you how to draw it manually. This time, we'll do a few things differently. Again, we'll start with the walls, but this time I'm going to have the dormer sit back from the front wall. So we'll draw all three walls of the dormer, and then use our temporary dimensions to indicate how far in from each outside wall the walls of this dormer should sit. 
Next, this dormer is completely contained within this roof plane. So to create the hole, we're going to start by drawing a rectangular polyline over top of the dormer, and then we'll convert that polyline to a hole in the roof. The rectangular polyline tool is found here. We'll click and drag to draw the rectangle over top of the dormer, and then we'll select the polyline, and down in the Edit toolbar, you'll find the option to convert the polyline. Right now, this polyline is a 2D object. It does not have any 3D data, but we can convert it to have 3D properties. We're going to convert it to a hole in the roof. Once we do, it'll ask us if we want it to be a skylight, and if there are any skylight properties we might want to apply. I do not, so I'm not going to check the box marked skylight, and instead just select OK. You can now see the walls extend up through the roof. And finally, let's draw the roof over top of this dormer. This time, we'll do a gable roof, so I'll draw my roof planes on each side of the dormer and use the Join Roof Plane tool to join them together. Then I'll extend the roof planes over the front of the dormer. Again, note how once the roof planes extend over the wall, the wall rises up to meet the roof. Now I'll need to connect the back of these roof planes to the main roof. To do this, I'm going to join the back edges of each of these roof planes to the hole in the roof. If I select the hole in the roof, right now the back of this hole only has one edge. I will need to connect it with two roof planes, though, going in different directions. So I'm again going to use my break line tool to break this edge into two edges so each one can join with a different roof plane. Now let's select one of these edges, select the Join Roof Plane tool, then select the Dormer Roof Plane we want to connect this to. And then we'll do that again. I'll select the back edge of this Dormer Roof Plane, select Join Roof Planes, and select the other back edge of the hole in the roof. And that completes that Dormer. Again, if I want to place windows in it, I can. If I want to copy this dormer, I'll need to select all the elements of the dormer at once by holding down my control key to select each one in turn, the hole in the roof, the roof planes, and the walls of the dormer. Then I can select copy, and I'll drag a copy of this dormer into another area of the plan. Now let's take a closer look at attic walls and dormer walls. When I say attic wall, I mean a couple of different things. First off, I can select any wall in the plan and select the box marked attic wall. But all this does is move it to the wall's attic layer. It does not change any of the properties of that wall. Most of the time, when we refer to an attic wall, we mean a wall that was built automatically that fills the gap between the top of one wall and the roof above it. So for example, when I created a gable roof over on this wall, Chief Architect automatically drew this wall for me. It filled the space between the top of my wall and where it met the roof. This also means that if I select a roof plane and raise it off the top plate, an attic wall will be placed below to fill that gap. These walls are also automatically marked as no locate, meaning automatic dimensions will not pick them up, and no room definition, meaning that it cannot be used to complete a room. So you will not be able to generate a floor or ceiling platform in rooms that have any walls marked to have no room definition. We can turn off this automatic creation of attic walls by going to our default settings, our wall defaults, and then General Wall Defaults, where you'll see the checkbox to automatically rebuild attic walls. If you do this, you may wind up with gaps in your plan. Like if I select this wall and delete it, now I have nothing supporting this roof plane. I would now be in the position of needing to draw all my attic walls manually. So I'm going to go back into my defaults and reselect this option. Most of the time, you'll probably want to have this turned on, unless you need to delete an attic wall that's building where you don't need it, or if you prefer to draw in all of your walls manually. Now let's move inside this house so we can take a closer look at our dormer walls. I'm zooming in by using the scroll wheel on my mouse. 
As you can see, right now I have a small gap between my roof and ceiling. The side walls of my dormer need to extend further back to cover this gap. Then I can just draw a wall here to enclose this attic room, and I can open it up and name it an attic room if I want to not have a flooring material or be calculated in my living area, since the roof is so low in that room. Now I'm going to handle the wall on the other side differently. Here's a picture of what I want it to look like. So I'm still going to extend the wall out to fill the hole between the ceiling and roof, but then I'm going to draw a knee wall closer to the outside edge of the dormer so we can maximize our living space. Then I'll select the wall, use the Break Wall option in my Edit toolbar to break this wall into two pieces, open up the section that I want to follow the roof line, and under the Roof options, I'll check this box marked Roof Cuts Wall at Bottom. And this is the result. Now let's look over at this dormer wall to explore one final option. If I want to leave this wall as is, but I don't want to have siding extending into my room, I can open this wall and under the Roof options, I can select the box marked Lower Wall Type if split by Budding Roof. This means that above my roof line, it will take the overall wall type of this wall, but beneath the roof line, we can have a different type of wall, in this case, an interior 6-inch wall. I'll select OK to apply the change, and you can see that outside of my home, we have a wall with siding, and inside my home, we have an interior wall with drywall on both sides. We also could take this entire wall and select Roof Cuts Wall at Bottom if we want the whole wall to angle with the roof. This essentially creates a floating or decorative dormer where the roof is supporting the walls of the dormer. If you would prefer to not see the attic walls in your floor plan, you can go to your Display Options and deselect the layer Walls Attic. This is where making walls as attic walls can come in handy, because any wall with that option selected will automatically switch to the Walls Attic layer so that you can turn off its display while leaving the remaining walls showing. Knowing how to manually adjust dormers and dormer walls can be helpful when you have unique one-and-a-half-story structures. Using Chief Architect's automatic and manual dormer tools, you can create a wide variety of custom dormers for your projects.